Rhino is an exceptionally capable 3D CAD and modeling package, which can create accurate and highly detailed models using a combination of NURBS curves, polysurfaces, solid geometry, point clouds, and polygon meshes. Rhino is also an excellent choice for product and prototype development, manufacturing, engineering, and CAM applications. What Rhino is not strong at is in the AEC or architecture, engineering, and construction sector. This is mainly due to its lack of an accurate light transport simulation renderer, physical-based material libraries, and its users having to struggle with a limited and physically inaccurate lighting definition system. But these limitations have been substantially removed with the release of the latest version of the IRA for Rhino plugin. IRA for Rhino not only features the industry-leading IRA real-time and physically accurate rendering engine, but also provides direct access to a huge library of high-performance finishes, which now includes the unique facility of defining accurate IES standard light-fitting photometric distributions as a single collection of easily edited MDL material definitions. In other words, using Rhino, even the most complex and demanding visualization tasks can now be fully and simply achieved by bringing together just two components, Rhino's geometry elements and a set of MDL material definitions. To explain this process better, here we start off with a simple room with a scattering of library furniture elements and some MDL materials already applied. Now we want to add some lighting. So we do this by creating two separate MDL materials using industry standard IES photometric output. As with any other materials we want to bring into our scene, we find the IES light source base definition in our inbuilt MDL library system and add this to our scene library. Then we click on the materials scene tab at the top of our list. We find the IES light source definition we have just added. For our demonstration here, we need to create a second light source definition, so we'll add a suffix A to this first definition. Then use the context menu to create a duplicate light source definition and edit that name to add a suffix B. Next, we double click on the IES light source A thumbnail to open up its material editor. Here we can see all the controls needed for fully defining our IES light sources, where we can precisely set the light source color the light distribution, and the light source output values. So why do we need to use IES distribution files? The standard light source options provided in most visualization systems, such as spot, point, and directional lights, simply cannot exist in the real world, with their simplistic distributions and physically impossible source configurations. Plus there is the problem that the photometric values of these light sources are arbitrary, resulting in not only inaccurate and misleading visualization, but also this lighting system detail cannot be properly specified in the construction documentation. IES files, on the other hand, provide a set of light intensity values that are actually measured from real-world light fittings. So by using IES file values, we can create accurate photoreal image output and also enable specifiers to precisely document details such as mounting locations, aiming data, and light specification. So to help us with selecting our IES light sources, here we use an excellent app called IES Viewer to quickly view the photometric properties of each IES light type. You will find the link to freely download this valuable app in the description below. So here we select a relatively standard medium.ies distribution file and we will leave all the other settings at the default values. Then we open up the material editor for our second IES light source, and this time we select a more complex asymmetric distribution complete with the significant upward light component, as you can see in this superimposed distribution diagram. Again, we leave all the other settings at their default values. Now we close the material editor and library dialog panels. Next, we jump forward to where we've created a simple 200 millimeter diameter disc and placed it close to the ceiling. Then with our disk still selected, we open up the materials dialog again, select the IES light source A scene material, and use the context menu to assign this material to our new disk object. Now when we turn on the IRA display option, we can see our room accurately illuminated by this new single light fitting. We again open up our material library dialog and double click on our assigned light source material to display the editor for that material. 
clicking on the IES file button to allow us to change the light distribution from medium to narrow. In the IRA viewport, you can see the immediate updating of the distribution and its effect within the surrounding room. Now we move our new light toward the corner of the room and change the IES distribution back to medium. Again, we jump forward to where we have arrayed our new down light in two rows of three across our room. You will also notice that we've deliberately spaced the light source discs off the ceiling in order to show the accuracy of the light emission distribution as defined by the associated IES file. Next, using Rhino's geometry tools, we create a 200 mm diameter cylinder to use our second light type and moved it closer to the ceiling. Then, with the cylinder still selected, we again open the materials dialog and assign our second IES material. Closing the material dialog, we can see our cylinder emitting both the upward and downward light components. But as we enlarge the view of the cylinder, you will also see that there is very little light being emitted out of the sides of the cylinder. This is because the IES file distribution also shows that there is almost zero intensity at these angles. Providing an excellent demonstration of the unique and accurate capability of MDL IES materials when assigned to 3D elements. Although in reality, you would actually apply a different finish to the housing of this light fitting. Now we move our new light closer to the back wall to get a better view of the distribution of light. Which naturally causes the surface brightness on that part of the back wall to increase dramatically. So, in the settings dialog, we reduce the exposure value to a lower level. Next, we open up the material dialog for this light distribution. And now we want to show we can rotate the distribution of this light from within the material definition. We start by rotating the IES distribution to 90 degrees and notice the almost instant change to the light on the wall near our cylinder light. Next, we rotate the distribution to 180 degrees. Then 270 degrees, watching the light distribution on the wall change each time. Now, we want to show you a series of luminaire types that would be difficult to accurately create using conventional geometry configurations and IES distribution files. In this first example, we show suspended 300 by 1200 mm LED paddle luminaires arrayed across our test room. The problem here is that you normally would position the IES file just below the emitting panel to allow the primary downward light component to illuminate the floor. But in that case, the equally significant upward component would be blocked by the geometry of the panel. The normal way to overcome this is to either add a fake light source above the panel or add a fake light emissive material to the top panel surface, which obviously takes extra time and will make the output content inaccurate. But by applying an MDL IES material definition to the LED panel, all of the above issues simply disappear, resulting in rapidly produced and accurate output content. The other great advantage here is the speed and simplicity of firstly creating these light fittings with the MDL IES materials applied, and then secondly saving these assemblies as Rhino block instances. This will enable the rapid creation of large libraries of accurately pre-configured light fittings that can be simply dragged and dropped into your 3D scenes. In this next example, we show an array of suspended downlight sources where, using Rhino tools, we select the row of downlights nearest the back wall and use Rhino's gumball tool to quickly re-aim all the selected lights towards the back wall. This example shows an array of industrial pendant luminaires with dished refractors. Again, as with our first example, the normal light configuration would require us to position the IES distribution file just below the dish refractor and apply a fake emissive material to the refractor geometry. We cannot place this IES file inside the reflector refractor assembly as the light output distribution would be significantly reduced and distorted. In our final example, here we show a suspended linear LED luminaire with separated light emitting surface elements. By simply applying the same MDL IES material to both emitting surfaces results in each luminous element only emitting its precise component of light distribution exactly as defined in the associated IES file. Again, any other method of configuring this type of luminaire would require the application of at least two different and inaccurate light distribution types. In this next part of the movie, we wanted to show you how easy and powerful it is to work with the vast inbuilt library of standard MDL finishes. 
We start by selecting the floor surface and open up our scene materials library. Select a blue carpet and use the Assign to Selected option to apply this change and Scene View updates almost immediately. Next, we select the back wall and apply a ceramic red tile finish. We move our camera to get a wider view of the space and with our new selected finishes. Then we again move our camera to get a closer and angled view of the ceramic red tile finish. Opening up the scene materials dialog, we double click on the red tile thumbnail to display its material editor. And again, double clicking on the tile color field, we open up a color sub dialog where we quickly change our base tile color to green. and watch this change almost immediately in our rendering viewport with our brand new selected ceramic tile. Now in this final part of the movie, we wanted to show you a selection of large and detailed projects that were interactively assembled and designed using real-time photo-accurate rendering. And also note that the detail in both of these projects are entirely comprised of only two components, geometry elements and cross-platform MDL material definitions.